Have you ever wondered why you can't seem to stop eating cheese? You know how like one piece of pizza turns into three? Or why macaroni and cheese feels like this warm, comforting hug? What if I told you that cheese is more than just a food? That it actually plays with your brain in a way you probably never heard of? Eerily similar to opioids, which make up some of the most addictive drugs around the world. So this all started with a LinkedIn post. Innocent enough, right? And I was preparing a presentation to give to some Girl Scouts about food science, and I really wanted the best food science facts to wow them. This was the first time ever that I had heard about cheese having these opioid-like effects, which blew my mind because I grew up in Wisconsin, which is basically the dairy capital of the U.S. I've eaten way too much cheese throughout my entire life, and somehow I'd never heard of this. So first, I gotta do some research, and I start with Google, where I learned that one medical doctor has been calling cheese dairy crack because of these similarities to opioids. Uh, but I had to do the research for myself. I had to do more digging to see, is this true? The first thing I noticed was it's not just cheese. I mean, look at this table of different food proteins. I do just want to point out, so it's not actually the protein that causes these like opioid effects. The proteins are simply the precursor molecules. It's really when these proteins are digested or chopped into smaller pieces, it's these molecules that have the opioid effect. But still, I really wanted to dig into what happens when we eat cheese. And as a food scientist, I know cheese is mostly made up of this protein called casein. So casein forms the gel network in cheese. It also is what forms the network in yogurt. And so when we eat cheese, what our body does is it starts to digest or break down casein. It breaks that protein into smaller fragments called peptides. And some of these peptides are known as casomorphins. Now here's where it gets interesting. These chesomorphins, they're not just ordinary peptides. They're actually pretty extraordinary because it's these protein fragments that bind to the opioid receptors in our brain. Like that's the same receptors that drugs like morphine or heroin also are able to bind to. This is no accident. So chasomorphins, they're what's called a bioactive peptide, which means they're actually active in our body. And when they get into our brain, they can latch onto our opioid receptors and trigger this response, which releases dopamine. This is the same feel good chemical that's released when you, you know, take an addictive substance or when you exercise. But these Opioid-like effects, they're not nearly as powerful as something you would like get from a drug like heroin. These are very mild, like a subtle effect, although it is able to build over time, which might explain why you keep reaching and reaching for more cheese. There is one chesomorphin that scientists have particularly been very interested in, and this is beta chesomorphin 7, or to shorten that, I'm just gonna call it BCM7. BCM7 has been found to have the most pronounced effect when it comes to these different chasomorphins. And what's interesting is not all dairy products are created equally when it comes to BCM7. Fresh or pasteurized milk doesn't have significant amounts of BCM7 and these related peptides, and that's because casein, that protein, it's mostly found intact. The real transformation happens during the production of fermented dairy products and especially aged cheeses because as a cheese matures, it actually undergoes proteolysis or where that casein, that protein is chopped up and this often releases BCM7. This happens during the fermentation process because there's actually a lot of things in the cheese that are able to act like little scissors and cut up the casein. So for example, there's enzymes naturally found in cheese that might cut up the protein. It could be due to the bacteria we added as the starter culture or some bacteria that like snuck into the cheese as we're making it. 
all these different possibilities can lead to the production of BCM7 and other casomorphins as that casing, that protein, is being broken down. As the cheese ages more and more, you get this uh, higher likelihood that the cheese contains elevated levels of BCM7, which if you have a hard time saying no to aged cheeses, this might explain why you have those cravings. If chasomorphins were the only actor at play here, this would be a simple story. But, you know, addictive substances, it's not always just about one chemical. There can actually be multiple factors happening. Cheese is more than just protein. And there's also high amounts of fat and salt, two nutrients which our bodies also really crave. And particularly when you see fat and salt used in combination, this is just really irresistible to us. It's called hedonic synergy. And we know this combination of salt and fat really lights up the pleasure centers in our brain. But not everyone feels the pull of cheese the same way. So some people, they are actually genetically predisposed to uh, feel an elevated response to those chasomorphins that originate from the dairy products they have eaten. Research has shown that genetic differences can actually change how you respond to chasomorphins like BCM7, and there's really two differences. So you could have opioid receptor genes that actually make you more sensitive to these molecules and would give you an elevated effect. And another option is that you might have digestive enzymes that are more efficient in cleaving casein and make more of that BCM7 during digestion, which would also give you this elevated opioid-like effect, although it would still be mild. So in the end, I wouldn't say, you know, cheese is a drug because it has this like super mild effect compared to, you know, actual drugs, but it does trigger or interact with our brain the same way many very addictive substances do, which still like blows my mind. If you enjoyed this video, next I would recommend checking out how food microstructure can actually change what you eat.